This is Kurt Heisinger, accounting professor at Sierra College and author of Managerial Accounting. This video focuses on the four steps that are used to assign costs to products using the very common weighted average method. Uh, and we're focusing on process costing here. So I'm, I'm not going to spend a lot of time going through the four steps on this slide because we'll spend more time in the future slides going through this in detail. So let me just quickly summarize. We have four steps. The first step is to uh, summarize the physical flow of units and then compute the equivalent units for the three product costs, direct materials, direct labor, and overhead. The second step is to summarize the costs to be accounted for. So we're really just trying to get information together to run some calculations at the end with step four. Step three is to calculate the cost per equivalent unit. And again, we're going to go through each of these. And step four is to use the cost per equivalent unit to assign costs to those units that were transferred out of work and process over into finished goods, and also to make sure we have the right costs for the units that are still in ending work and process inventory. We'll use the information presented in this slide for the example that we will uh, work through in the uh, following slides. So we're going to look at the assembly department within our company for one month. In this example, it's the month of May. And we are assembling um, identical desks. And we, we mass produce these desks. And we have two different departments, an assembly department and a finishing department. So we're focusing on the assembly department in this example. Remember, each department has its own work in process account, work in process inventory account. So again, here we're looking at the assembly department work in process inventory account. So very quickly, you can you can pause and look at this slide carefully on your own. So I'm going to do this relatively quickly, quickly expecting you to have to pause it and look it over. Um, we've got lots of information here. The company is, had had uh, 3,000 units in beginning work in process inventory. That is, at the end of uh, last month, we had 3,000 units at, in work in process inventory that carried over into May. So these are units that are not completed yet. Um, but during May, they were all completed and transferred out. Then um, over into finish, uh, or rather into the finishing department. Then during May, we started 6,000 units, and of those 6,000 units that were started, we uh, completed and transferred out a thousand of those units and that means that they we were completely done with regards to direct materials, direct labor, and overhead. And then we had 5,000 units remaining that were still partially completed in work and process at the end of May and they had various, uh, varying levels of completion, 60% for direct materials, 30% for direct labor, and 30% uh, for overhead. And we'll have to, to work with those percentages in a little bit here. We also have cost information at the very bottom here. We have costs that were in beginning work in process, 161000 and then we had costs that we incurred during May in the work in process department, in this assembly department, of $225,000. So the, these are the key right here. These costs that we have uh, either carried over into May from April or that we incurred in May need to be divvied out, step four, need to be divvied out for those goods that have been completed and moved out of this department and for those goods that are still in this department. So we're going to be coming back to those costs a little bit later. Okay, so we're looking at step one here and step one is to compute what we call equivalent units. There are lots of footnotes here I'm not going to go through the footnotes. Again, I expect you to pause and take this, this presentation, this video, and take a look at these footnotes if you need to. So I'm not going to read through those in detail, but they're very helpful, and I recommend you look at them. What we have here is the equivalent unit calculation. We start with physical units. That is, how many units uh, do we have? in work in process, and, and, and we're, we're breaking those out. We've got how many have gone through work in process. Essentially 9,000 have gone through work in process, but 4,000 of those are uh, were completed and transferred out. 5,000 of those are still sitting in work in process at the end of May. So those are the physical units. Then what we want to do is to calculate the equivalent units based on the percentage of completion that was given in the prior slide, and you can see them in the footnotes here as well. Uh, we're not worried about the equivalent units for these units that were completed and transferred out, they're 4,000. They wouldn't be 100%, they're 100% complete by definition if they were transferred out. 
So what we're really focusing on is right here the equivalent units for the ending, those units that are still there in work in process. 5,000 of them are still there in work in process. And we want to know, okay, of those 5,000 units with regards to direct materials, how much, uh, what was our percentage of completion? Multiply that by 5,000, happens to be 60% times 5,000, and that gives us 3,000 equivalent units for direct materials. And then direct labor and overhead were 30% complete, and 30% times 5,000 is 1,500 equivalent units for those items. So when we add that to the 4,000 units, that gives us the units uh, accounted total units that were accounted for and then the equivalent units of those total units accounted for. So the equivalent units for direct materials 7,000, for direct labor 5,500 and for overhead 5,500. We're going to use that later. We're going to need those equivalent units later so when you see that being discussed later and if you're not sure what that means come back to this slide. Next we're looking at summarizing the costs to be accounted for. All of this information was provided uh, back a couple of slides, so you can go back and find the information. Essentially, we're looking at all the costs that were in beginning work and process inventory for direct materials, direct labor, and overhead, and we're doing the same with those costs that were incurred in May. So we just simply break them out into direct materials, direct labor, and overhead, and we have our total costs for each of those areas. We're going to use that. Uh, in future steps. So if you need to come back and you're wondering where those costs came from, this is the slide to look at. Now we're going to calculate the cost per equivalent unit. That's, uh, that's the purpose of this slide. And we have all the information we need from the previous two slides, so don't hesitate to go back and take a look at those if you're not sure where these numbers came from. But what we have are total costs uh, with direct materials of 210000 we have total equivalent units of 7,000, so you take 210,000 divided by 7,000, and the cost per equivalent unit for direct materials is $30. We run the same exact calculation for direct labor and overhead to come up with the cost per equivalent unit for each of those as well. We're going to need this information as we get into step four on the next slide. With step four, we now assign costs to completed units transferred out and to units in ending work in process inventory. The footnotes are critical with this example, so please take a look at these footnotes carefully so you see where this information comes from. Uh, I'll just go through one or two of these to give you a sense of how this works. So costs that are assigned to units transferred out for direct materials of $120,000, that comes from, look down below with, I'm focusing on this number right here, look down here at this footnote, and you'll see that 120,000 comes from the 4,000 4, equivalent units. Go back uh, to previous slides, you'll see that, times $30 per equivalent unit, again, from previous slides. That's where the $120,000 comes from. Uh, to, to, to continue that thought, if you want to see where the $90,000 came, uh, comes from here for direct materials, this cost was from 3,000 equivalent units uh, sitting uh, in ending work and process inventory times $30, same $30 as before, per equivalent unit. So that's where those numbers come from. Be sure to take a look at these other footnotes so you get a, a good sense of how these calculations are run. It's also important to note, and it's in this final footnote down here, that this $386,000 should match the cost that we had to account for from a previous slide. So you can go back and take a look at that and see how those two numbers match. And we've taken that 386,000 and allocated it to the costs in ending work and process inventory and to the costs assigned to units transferred out over into the finishing department. The $248,000 in costs assigned to units transferred out is the focus of our next slide. So the result of all of this work is a journal entry, and that's what you see here. It's this journal entry right here. And what's happening here is we are um, uh, taking, let me bullet point this for you so you realize that's what we're focusing on right now. Uh, what the, the, what's happening here is we're taking the $248,000, I'm putting a minus sign here, crediting, out of work and process inventory the assembly department, that's the department we were just focusing on, and moving that $248,000 over into, adding it to, the uh, work and process inventory account 
for the finishing production department. The remaining $138,000 stays in work and process inventory in the assembly department, and that'll uh, carry over into the next month where we run this whole analysis again. Very important. It's very important to point out that we've accounted for the entire $386,000, and part of that is being moved over into finishing, and part of that stays in assembly. The previous slide shows those details.